the clock is ticking. We are in the fight of our lives. And we are losing. Greenhouse gas emissions keep growing. Global temperatures keep rising. And our planet is fast approaching tipping points that will make climate chaos irreversible. We are on a highway to climate hell with our foot still on the accelerator. Ito ang babala ni UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres sa pagbubukas ng COP27 sa Sharm El Sheikh, Egypt noong November 7. Aniya, ang naturang annual UN Climate Conference ay dapat magsilbing paalala na ang sagot sa krisis ng climate change ay nasa ating mga kamay. Ngunit ano nga ba ang ating mga target at kailangang gawin o pagtuunan ng pansin to avoid climate catastrophe? Here's what you need to know. Isa lamang ang net zero sa mga pinakamahalagang tema ng climate conference o anumang usapin tungkol sa climate crisis. Ngunit ano nga ba ang ibig sabihin nito? And is it doing more harm than good? These terms are important kasi yun yung way para mag-grasp ng people. Pero para hindi siya maging buzzword, ang sobrang important na point ka lang diinan ay climate education. Yung climate awareness. So dapat, as we use these terms, dapat in-explain natin siya. Dapat um, pinapakilala natin sa mga mamayang tao. For people to be able to engage in climate action and to hold the government accountable. Net zero kung tawagin ang pagbabawas sa ating greenhouse gas emissions kasabay ng pagtanggal ng greenhouse gases na mayroon na sa ating atmosphere. Ito ay para mabalanse ang carbon dioxide o CO2 across the world by actively and simultaneously removing it in the air upang maabot ang sinasabing zero o carbon neutrality. The need for net zero was underlined in the historic Paris Agreement during COP21 in 2015. Isa itong breakthrough for climate action kung saan mahigit 190 nations ang pumirma sa isang legally binding international treaty kung saan kasama ang pagbabawas sa global greenhouse gas emissions upang mapigilan ang lalong pagtaas ng global temperature. Encouraging naman yung uh, sitwasyon natin ngayon dahil nung itong November 2022, Ayon sa ulat, 140 countries na ang nag-commit na sila ay magne-net zero by 2030. So ito ay almost 88% of the global emissions. Samantalang noong May 2021 or last year, 130 countries na ang nag-commit for net zero which is 70%. Patuloy ang pag-init ng ating planeta hanggat nagpapatuloy ang global emissions. Another problem with the term net zero kasi is the way na ginagamit siya. Ginagawa siyang promise in the future na sobrang layo, na wala namang concrete plans and steps paano ba kakarating dun sa, sa net zero 2050, 2040, 2030, diba? And the, all of that is already too late. Kasi yung emissions natin ngayon, sobra-sobra na. Yung mga nangyayari na ngayon ay dahil dun sa emissions na yon. At kailangan na natin bawasan ngayon pa lang. According sa UN Emission Gap Report, Upang mapanatili ang global warming below 2 degrees Celsius at maabot ang target na 1.5 degrees Celsius Earth temperature, kailangang mapigilan ang production ng 25 gigatons of CO2 equivalent greenhouse gas emissions by 2030. Sa kabila nito, kung titingnan ang nationally determined contributions ng mga bansa, mayroong gap na katumbas ng 19 to 27 gigatons of CO2 equivalent. May gap pa rin. So kailangan talaga ambitious yung sinasabi natin sa ating discussions uh, globally. There should be an ambitious target for the developed countries to really reduce their greenhouse gas emissions. Sa Pilipinas naman, mayroon din tayong sariling targets. Ayon sa Philippine Greenhouse Gas Inventory of 2010, Ang ating total emissions ay 107.3 million metric tons of carbon dioxide equivalent na katumbas ng 0.39% ng total global emissions. 
Ang gumagawa ng ating greenhouse gas inventory sa ngayon ay ang uh, Climate Change Commission. There's an ongoing inventory. Uh, hopefully, we can complete it within this year so that uh, next year, medyo, uh, we can already rely on an updated inventory. At kahit dito sa Pilipinas, ang fossil fuels na sanhi ng carbon dioxide emissions ang primary source ng ating energy supply. 61% ng ating energy source ay galing sa non-renewable oil at coal. Kung pagbabatayan natin yung current energy needs natin, mataas pa rin talaga ang pagdepende natin sa coal. At kung titingnan natin yung plano ng Department of Energy, yung kanilang Philippine Energy Plan, kung masusunod ito, mga 12% ang mare-reduce natin na greenhouse gas emission. No? Pero kung hindi naman, uh, tinataya na tatas ito ng mga 300% in 2030 pa, mga 210 million metric tons of carbon dioxide equivalent. Ang iba pang nilalaman ng kanilang clean energy plan ay ang pagkakaroon ng 5% blending for biodiesel starting this year. 1.5 increase in the aggregated natural gas consumption from the transport and industry sectors at 5% energy savings on oil products. Our world is burning. Climate change is here. And we are already suffering the consequences. Realistic pa ba ang 1.5 degree Celsius target temperature? Sa nakaraang taon, 24 na bansa lamang ang naghigpit ng polisiya para mabawasan ang kanilang emissions. Ito ay sa kabila ng isang international scientific consensus na para mapigilan ang pinakamalalang epekto ng climate change, kinakailangang bumaba ang ating global carbon dioxide emissions ng 45% by 2030. Pero tila kabaligtaran ang nangyayari. Pataas pa rin ng pataas ito. In fact, it will rise by around 10% in the next 7 years. Kailangan ngayon pa lang may plano na paano makarating dun sa reduced emissions and carbon neutral. So yun yung kailangan may, ma, matandaan talaga na yung reduced emissions yung crucial dun sa usapin ng net zero. Imbis na net zero lang yung tinitignan natin, kailangan makita natin paano ba nila planong mag-reduce ng emissions. Dito rin pumapasok ang konsepto ng negative emissions o carbon negative. To achieve reduced emissions, the world has to shift to using more renewable or clean energy sources. Para sa negative emissions naman, we rely on carbon capturing o ang pag-alis ng CO2 sa ating atmosphere. Ang halimbawa nito ay ang natural remedies katulad ng tree reforestation at carbon capture technology. Ang problema rito, dumedepende ang mundo sa mga inovasyon at teknolohiya na impractical at scale or worse, doesn't even exist yet. The problem is that the criteria and benchmarks for these net zero commitments have varying levels of rigor and loopholes wide enough to drive a diesel truck through. We must have zero tolerance for net zero greenwashing. Ayon sa mga kritiko ng COP27, hindi pa rin daw sapat ang inihain nito upang mabawasan ang emissions na sanhi ng climate change. We need credible and accountable pledges and commitments. Isa yan sa ating mga reporting ang mga developed countries para ma-account natin maigi at makita ano ba yung mga plano nila no? so para maabot nila itong mga targets na to. 27 na tayo na COP. Wala pa rin nangyayari kasi hindi naman pinapakinggan yung mga taong talagang naaapektahan ng krisis sa klima. While we're not gonna solve everything in one summit, diba? we have to understand that, but we can have great steps towards climate justice. If the world leaders finally listen, genuinely listen, and pay attention to what the people have been saying for decades now, now we need to prioritize people and planet and not profit. This is where the concept of the growth comes in. That the growth movement advocates shrinking the economy and its activities in order to save the planet. Economic growth and development ang naging layon ng buong mundo simula noong industrial revolution. Ito kasi ang nagbibigay ng trabaho sa mga mamamayan. Ito rin ang nagpapaunlad sa mga bansa at nagbabawas sa kahirapan. 
Ayon sa mga nagsusulong ng degrowth, hindi raw natin mababawasan ang greenhouse gas emissions kasabay ng pagsusulong pa rin ng economic expansion. Economic growth simply requires the use of more energy, putting the emissions goals needed to save the world more out of reach. In our continued pursuit of growth and greatness, are we effectively gambling our world? Para sagutin ito, kailangan na rin nating tingnan ang epekto ng climate change at natural disasters na dala nito sa ating ekonomiya. Sa Pilipinas pa lang, malaki na ang nawala sa atin sa nakaraang dekada. 290 billion pesos ang naging epekto sa agriculture, 106 billion sa infrastructure, at 66 billion sa private and communication assets. Ayon sa mga pag-aaral, nasa 3.5 billion dollars per year o mahigit sa 1% ng ating GDP ang nawawala in terms of direct losses pa lamang. So one thing is for sure. Kung gusto mo ng economic development, it has to be green, it has to be resilient, and it has to be inclusive. Kasi kung hindi mo tutugunan itong issue ng climate change, kahit anong economic gains meron ng ating bansa, hindi natin ma-achieve yung economic development. Mahalaga na may hoon tayong goals and targets. Ang parehong layunin ang gagabay sa mga polisiya ng bawat bansa sa mundo. Ito rin ang magkakaisa sa ating lahat upang suungin ang krisis na ito. There is hope. There is hope because there is an agreement to continuously talk, to continuously engage each other, to really help each other. But kailangan lang talaga Uh, we protect our interests, we promote our welfare no, as a developing country and as a vulnerable country then. We're going to be hearing a lot of mga promises, mga pledges ng mga different countries and it'll sound really good kasi gano'n naman siya lagi. Pero kailangan natin tignan talaga, kilitisin, pagtuwal ng, ng pansin, ano ba yung sinasabi nila? Paano ba, tayo, ba, ba sila makakarating doon? Dapat nating tandaan, targets are not guarantees. Most goals and targets fail to truly face the problem of climate change. And this is something that we cannot fall short on. Ako si Zayar Guelies para sa GMA Integrated News. COP27 concludes with much homework and little time. We need all hands on deck to drive justice and ambition. And this also includes ambition to end the suicidal war on nature that is fueling the climate crisis, driving species to extinction, and destroying ecosystems. It will take each and every one of us fighting in the trenches each and every day. Together, let's not relent in the fight for climate justice and climate ambition. We can and must win this battle for our lives.